that already exist in an assembly. When working with top-down design, you can also create components that are completely new. For this example, this stapler still needs the part that slides along the staple holder and pushes the staples to the front. Since there isn't a lot of clearance between the existing components, I'll create the part within the assembly environment as a good time saver. This approach allows me to make changes in the assembly and ensure that the new component fits properly, all without starting a new part file. Here, I only want to work with the staple holder components, so I'll first create a view rep that hides everything else. I'll press the Shift key and select all of the components in the browser. Then I'll press the Control key to deselect the staple holder components. Next, I'll right click on one of the selected parts and deselect visibility. And you can see that only the staple holder components are visible. Now I'm ready to make the in place component. I'll click the Create icon on the ribbon, and the Create in place component dialog box appears, which contains several fields for the data that defines the new component. First, I'll change the name to Staple Positioner. Then I can either choose a template from the dropdown or browse for a different template. For this part, I'll use standard.ipt as the template. Finally, I want the new part to be in the same folder as the assembly, so I'll confirm that the file location is correct, leave the other settings at the defaults, and click OK. You can see the new component icon now appears next to the cursor. I want to place the new part on the inside face of the staple holder. So I'll switch to the back view, zoom in, and select the right inside face. With that, the new part is added to the browser. But before I sketch anything, I'll return to the assembly to position the part. I recommend using the origin geometry to position in place components whenever possible. The primary function of the staple positioner is to push the staples along the staple guide, so its position should match that of the assembly. From the browser, I'll turn on the origin geometry for the staple positioner. And notice there's already a flush constraint between the XY plane and the inside face of the staple holder. Inventor placed this automatically when the part was created. Before I constrain the other two planes, I'll make the staple holder top component invisible. Now, I'll constrain the XZ plane to the top of the staple guide. And since the staple positioner needs to be aligned with the center of the staple holder, I'll select the YZ planes of both components. and make them flush. The main advantage to using origin geometry is that it's easier to constrain the staple positioner in other assemblies when I can select the origin planes instead of model geometry. I can also take advantage of the origin geometry during modeling. Before I start modeling, I want to make a couple view changes. I'll turn off the origin geometry for the staple positioner, Reactivate the top part, and go to the View tab on the ribbon to activate the Half Section View command. Next, I'll click on the front face of the staple holder and drag the cutting plane back. I want to look at the parts from the back side of the assembly, so I'll right click to switch the direction of the section cut and finish the command. Once I rotate to the back view and zoom in, I have a good view inside of the staple holder. I'll reactivate the stapler positioner and start a new sketch on its XY plane. Since I used origin geometry for the assembly constraints, I can project the X and Y axes into the sketch as references, and then sketch a couple of rectangles to get the basic shape of the part. I'll then use the trim command to clean up any extra lines in the sketch. To constrain the sketch, I'll add dimensions for the height of the rectangle, the inside width, 
and the thickness of the rectangle. Next, I'll add coincident constraints between the midpoints of the top rectangle edges and the y-axis. Then add an equal constraint to the outer vertical lines. And a parallel constraint between the two upper horizontal lines. Now that the sketch is fully constrained, I'll switch to the Model tab and activate the Extrude command. I'll select the sketch and make sure the extrusion depth is at 1 inch. This looks good, so I'll click OK. And the in-place staple positioner component is finished.